My name is Admiral Sterling Fosbot, and I'm here to talk to you about how to teach and exercise to your dogs. Since I am not a dog, I am a little tiny human. Last time we talked about philosophy and how if your dogs are afraid, they will exhibit bad behaviors. But today we're going to get into the meat and the sweet potatoes of actually training the exercise. So like, subscribe, and share, and follow along. Goodbye. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to talk about how to teach an exercise. So the idea is, is number one, you want to have your motivation. You want to have your positive motivation whenever we're doing teaching an exercise and actually starting an exercise we want to use mostly positive reinforcement almost completely positive reinforcement because we want to teach them that is that doing these exercises is actually a good thing so we have admiral sterling fuzzbutt here which is adorable uh that's going to help us with that and right now we're just going to show you a down uh simple thing i like to put them whenever they're puppies like this i like to put them up on a high surface for two reasons whoa One of the reasons is because that's a little frightening and it will encourage them to stay up there so you don't have to spend a bunch of time chasing them around. The other reason is because if you got a nice narrow platform, it helps keep them centered and straight. So we're going to go over the actual command process. So what, what the command process is, is the first thing you're going to do is you are going to give them a command. After you give them the command, you're going to bait them into position. Sit. Good. Then you're going to mark good. You're going to tell them that they're right. Then you're going to give them the reward. Free, and then you're going to free them up. The reason we want to free them up is we want to make sure that we always use the word free because eventually we're going to train these exercises as static exercises. And these exercises are going to be, it's not only, sit is not only going to mean sit, but sit is going to mean sit and stay at the same time. By taking that word out of there and just changing our behaviors and keeping the responsibility on us on how we're going to deal with it, we actually have the opportunity to teach them a more complex task of sit, meaning sit and stay there until I've released you. So we're going to go ahead and do it down. So we're going to command, we're going to wait for the behavior, bait them into the behavior. Once they've completed the behavior, we're going to, we're going to mark good, we're going to reward, and then we're going to free them up. Sit. Good. Timing is very important. Down. Now, whenever you bait it down, what you want to do is you want to close the food inside of your hand and you want to kind of push it into good. Free. Good boy. You want to push it into their chest like this, especially when they're up on a climb. You want to push it into their chest because then that forces them to back into a down. Now, if you're doing competition stuff that's really important, you want your dog to down backwards and leaving their front feet in place. In regular life, it's not really that important, but we might as well teach it the right way. The, if you guys go on to YouTube and you uh, look up Dog Trainer's Handshake, there's a video by Michael Ellis which talks about that and talks about the way that dogs do their sits and downs and stands. Excuse me the way that they do their sits and downs and stands that is different whenever you're dealing with an actual trainer and so you can actually tell if this is a trainer or if this is just somebody who does this recreationally um, it's a good video go ahead and check it out so we're going to do it again down we're going to use the command we're going to bait them into position if we need to help them out good brief now this is not going to be perfect right off the bat you want to go ahead and have some patience with this and make sure that they that you give them the time. We're not correcting at all at this stage with a puppy. Um, when we're just barely training the exercise, all we're doing is um, all we're doing is trying to reward them for actually performing the behavior. So down. He's a little nervous. Down. Good. I always like to use high tones of voices and everything to uh, teach them these things, uh, to reward them because they do pay a lot of attention to tone of voice. And so the more exciting and the more happy you are about whatever it is that they just did, the more they're going to understand that this is a reward. Down. Give them a little bit of help. Down. All four elbows need to be on the ground. Down. 
See? Don't get frustrated if it doesn't work. Down. If you need to pull it a little bit forward, down. Down. Good. Breathe. We're, don't forget to free them up because it's going to be very important in the future. Down. Good. Breathe. Down. Anyway, so we've done this exercise three or four or five times, but you can already see a little bit of recognition. The recognition comes from our consistency in behavior because we withhold the treat. If you can see, I like to hold the treat in my hand like this. I don't know if you can see this, but I hold my tr the treat in my hand like this, and I actually place my thumb over the food. So I put it in here, and I place my thumb over the food. So, yeah, they can smell it. They can see it sometimes, but they can't actually get to it until I have released it. Baiting is an important thing that we'll do a video about as well. Uh, baiting them into position. Like I want him to straighten up now, so I just move it to the left, and I'm kind of using it like a steering wheel. Down. All the way. Good. I like to, whenever I use free, I like to give them some sort of motion. If we were doing a climb training, which we can go ahead and do, um, we, I will actually move away from them really quickly. Because dogs like to chase, but I want to let them know exactly what free means in the moment. So in this place, I'm kind of brushing up underneath his chin to let him know that he's allowed to get up. And I want to use that word very first thing. Like as soon as the exercise is finished, I want to use that word so that they don't beat me to the punch and they don't release themselves from the position. So we want to go ahead and free them up just immediately. Let's try it again just so I can show you. Down. Good. Free. Good boy. Free. Free. Come on. Free. Free. <laughs> Good boy. Sometimes it's going to be a little clunky in the beginning. But once they get good recognition of what it is that you're trying to teach them, they're going to understand that free means that they can get up. All right? One more time. Down. Good. Free. Good boy. Yeah. All right. Get you another good look at Admiral Sterling Fuzzbutt because he's just a purple and I love this little boy. All right. Bye-bye.